but the Fed has a hidden asset. In a surprising revelation, Jim Rickards talks about the Federal Reserve's balance sheet. He unveiled a hidden asset, gold certificates dating back to 1934. These certificates were issued to compensate the Fed when the U.S. Treasury confiscated its gold, a move that is believed to have legal complexities under the Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. The certificates, valued at the fixed rate of $42.22 per ounce on the Fed's balance sheet, were originally meant to represent the historical cost of the confiscated gold. However, the intriguing twist emerges when considering the potential revaluation of these gold certificates to reflect the current market price of gold, which hovers around $1,850 per ounce. If the certificates were marked to market, it could reveal a hidden asset on the Fed's books worth approximately $350 billion. This unexpected revelation adds an interesting dimension to the ongoing debates about the Fed's solvency and financial stability. The implications of such a revaluation extend beyond the immediate financial adjustments. It could revive discussions about the gold standard, a monetary system where a country's currency is directly tied to a specific quantity of gold. This potential move could be seen as acknowledging the true value of gold and its role in backing the country's currency. Jim Rickard speculates on how the gold price might react to such a revaluation, positing it as a significant event that could attract attention and prompt a surge in interest and investment in gold. Furthermore, the potential move could be perceived as the Fed indirectly reverting to a gold standard. With Jim Rickards estimating that a conservative 40% backing of M1 money supply would necessitate a gold price of around $15,000 per ounce. In essence, the idea of marking the gold certificates to market on the Fed's balance sheet is presented as a complex and potentially transformative event that could have far-reaching consequences. Sparking debates about the role of gold in the modern monetary system and the potential impact on the economy. Um, if you go again to go to the balance sheet, go to the uh, the asset side, the first line item, there's something called gold certificate. And what is that? Well, in 1934, the uh, U.S. Treasury confiscated the Fed's gold. They had already taken the gold from U.S. citizens by that point, uh, but they wanted it all, and so they took the Fed's gold. But under the fifth and but. Again, bearing in mind the Fed's privately owned. So under the Fifth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution, it is illegal, it's unconstitutional to seize property without paying just compensation. You can do it, but you, you got to pay the person, and then people get into all kinds of arguments about what it's actually worth. So what just compensation did the Treasury give to the Fed when they took the Fed's gold in 1934? The answer is they gave them a gold certificate. It can be, uh, you can calculate it. In other words, you can say, well, what is the amount of, gold by weight, not by dollar value, but by weight that is needed to back up that certificate given the historic cost. Well, the answer is about 8,000 tons. Guess how much gold the treasury has? About 8,000 tons. I mean, one of the reasons I've um, uh, hypothesized that the treasury stopped selling gold in 1980 because they sold, they lost gold to trading partners between 1950 and 1970. They lost uh, 11,000 tons. Down, they went from 20 to nine, but they sold another thousand tons in the 1970s to suppress the price of gold, which failed because it always does. Um, so, but by 1980, they had kind of were down to 8,000 tons and they stopped. Why did the U.S. stop selling gold? We've never sold any significant amount of gold since. The answer is, in my view, is that that they can't go below that because that's the amount of gold the treasury needs to back up this gold certificate on the Fed's books. So, okay, just kind of put that in to one side. That asset is valued on the Fed's balance sheet at $42.22 an ounce. The price of gold, you know, look today, it was about $1,850 an ounce. Now, so, you know, what's, as I say, sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. If we're going to mark the mortgages to market, in a world where interest rates have gone up and the mortgages have gone down, it's only fair to mark the gold to market. And if you mark that gold to market at $1,850 an ounce versus $42, voila, you would find that the Fed has another approximately $350 billion of hidden assets. So that takes care, I think that takes care of the solvency problem. So before we beat up the Fed on mark to market on mortgages, that's fine, but have a look at the gold and realize that they have a hidden asset, a uh, shadow asset on their books that's worth in the hundreds of billions of dollars. What do you think it would do to the gold price if they did revalue 
uh, mark to market their gold holdings. Do you think that would create a lot of attention for gold and, and people would pile in or do you think it would just be an accounting change that no one really notices? Uh, I think it would be a very big deal. Um, but it begs the question, uh, if you're going to revalue it, to what level do you revalue it? So I would say, well, the market's 1850. You know, that's about where it is today. It goes up and down, but so we value it at 1850. Um, that, uh, could be highly deflationary. And the reason is um, you, in effect, you're admitting, you're putting yourself on a gold standard. You don't have to, uh, that's why they won't do it. Uh, they don't wanna to touch it. But if you did, you would be saying, hey, gold's really worth 1850 and we have this much gold, et cetera. But at that point, um, analysts would sort of turn and say, well, okay, well, you're back to a kind of gold standard. Uh, what's the relationship between gold and money? Mm -hmm. And, or or um, uh, currency or you know, U.S. Oh. dollars and others, the money supply. But it, what is the relationship between gold and money supply? What you would find is that at 1850, uh, the gold relative to the money supply is about 2%. Whereas uh, historic gold standards were run with somewhere between 20 and 40%. Uh, Bank of England in the 19th century managed a successful gold standard between the Congress of Vienna and World War One with about 20% gold in the US through most of the 20th century, at least the first half, ran a gold standard with about 40% backing. It was actually the law. Um, the law until uh, the late 1960s, I think 1968, was that the Fed uh, Fed money supply, base money, could not be more than uh, two and a half times the value of gold. Um, originally at $20 an ounce, $20.67 an ounce, later $35 an ounce, but whatever that number was, um, times the amount of gold that 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 that, that was that had to be forty percent of the money supply, and the money supply could not be greater than that. And then they got rid of that in 1968 because of the war in Vietnam. But um, but the, but the point being, twenty percent has worked. Forty percent definitely works. Uh, the Austrians like to bang the table and insist on one hundred percent. But you know maybe, but that's uh, historically not been required. You just need enough gold to be able to give gold to people who want it when they want it. And and if you're credible in that dimension, most people are content to hold the money. So as a hypothetical, you can say, well, okay, let's say we want a gold standard and let's say that we want 40% backing of M1. Um, M2 is a bigger number, or at least it can be. Uh, let's just say, so 40% backing of M1, that's a, uh, uh, a conservative kind of gold standard, not extreme, but reasonable. What would the given the amount of gold the United States had has? What would the price of gold have to be in order to maintain that ratio? The answer is about fifteen thousand dollars an ounce. And people say, well, Jim, you used to say ten thousand dollars an ounce. Well, that's true because it was true at the time. But when you expand the money supply, the number goes up, right? Because the amount of gold is fixed. So uh, yeah, it was ten thousand uh, not that many years ago, and today it's fifteen thousand. Well, if you if you say gold is worth eighteen hundred people are going to say, well, give me the gold. I'll take all the gold you got at that price. Uh, and then they're going to have to shut the gold window again. And that has its own problems. But in other words, you would be, it's, it's not clear how it would work. I mean, there are a lot of ways it could work mechanically. It's not clear what the government would actually do. But my point is when you, if you try to mark gold to market on the Fed's balance sheet, you're opening Pandora's box because you are, you would be getting a lot of people, bankers, analysts, Wall Streeters, investors to sit up and take notice and say, well, hey, what is going on here? You know, you're back in the gold business. Well, you got the price wrong because uh, you can't back up your money supply at that level. And the truth is you can't.